So my name is Jonathan Simons. I'm the CMO here at MinIO. I'm going to give you a brief introduction about MinIO for those of you who don't know us, uh, who are seeing us for the first time from a storage field day perspective. Uh, this is our third storage field day, so I think a lot of the delegates have seen and understand this a little bit, um, but it always helps to put that baseline down. So first, in terms of what MinIO is, MinIO is a high-performance multi-cloud object store. Right? We're designed for large-scale data infrastructure, and we were built from scratch um, to be cloud native. We're built for this cloud operating model. So the only things that we've known since we came into existence are containerization and orchestration and APIs and automation. And that's how we think about the world. And if you look at the uh, diagram on the right, you really understand how that works out, right? So you have the foundational components of anything uh, from a compute perspective. You've got the CPU, you've got the network, and you've got the drive. And above that sits that universal API in, in terms of Kubernetes. And that presents and abstracts that, um, those foundational components uh, as really infrastructure as a service. And above that, MinIO can sit and be called like any other cloud native application prior to providing a you know, stateful data store, data persistence layer for a whole suite of cloud native applications that interact with us just using standard RESTful APIs. And that model has proven very, very uh, good to us. We have about three guiding principles that we talk a lot about at MinIO that are important to understand in the context of understanding what it is that we do. The first is performance. So we've invested heavily on the performance side in ways that nobody else would want to do. We've gotten our hands dirty. We've done SIMD acceleration. We've done a lot of things at the most basic and low level that you can in order to create a performant system and a performant architecture. Now, we're not focused just on performance from a vanity perspective, because frankly, being the world's fastest object store is nice. But the only reason we do it is because it allows you to run more applications. It allows you to attack more workloads. And that's what it fundamentally means for us is that we have a bigger market to go play in um, from a technology's perspective. The next is we're cloud native, right? Born in the cloud, we talked about it just a minute ago on the previous slide, but we think about the world in that context. And we ask ourselves constantly, is this the cloud native way? And if it's not the cloud native way, you won't find MinIO doing it. It's why you won't find us building out file systems. It's why you won't find us building out appliances, right? We look at the world from a cloud native perspective and first and foremost, and that's what we adhere to. And the last, and I think most least appreciated element of what it is that we do is simplicity, right? Simplicity from our perspective is, is a core value. Um, technology is inherently complex. Cloud storage does not need to be complex, right? The S3 API has become more complex, but we think that it can be distilled down uh, in a lot of ways to be simple. And the reason that we focus on simplicity is also pretty simple because simplicity scales. It scales operationally, it scales from a business perspective, and it scales um, just from an overall uh, size perspective in terms of petabytes to exabytes. Now, those principles have been very good to MinIO over the intervening years, right? We are a global company at this point. Our open source developer-led, low friction model has put us on every single continent uh, in, the United, uh, in the world, including Antarctica. Um, you'll find that even since we did our last storage field day, we've done 325 million Docker pulls. But more impressively is we're actually accelerating off of that number. We're currently doing about 1.3 million Docker pulls a day, right? And when you consume that number, you start to think about what the scale is of what it is that we're doing. That's also played out into just the regular business metrics. We're 200% growth numbers on both revenue and logo um, uh, accounts uh, in 2021 alone. And we also continue to see growth across all of our metrics, so from contributors to Slack channel and so forth. And this led us to uh, our Series B, which we announced in late January, where we raised 103 million at a slightly over $1 billion valuation for the company. And it was a really strong endorsement of the path that we're on and the company that we're building. So with that, we're gonna turn our attention to kind of the core element um, around object storage as primary storage. So I'm going to do that along with AB. Uh, AB is our co-founder and CEO, um, and we're going to kind of cover off on why object storage is primary storage. And I think the most important thing to note, and it won't be any shock to anybody in this room from a delegate perspective or online from a delegate perspective, but ultimately object storage 
has been primary storage in the public cloud since day one. Every single service of note that has been built on the public cloud has been built on object storage. Um, Redshift, object storage. BigQuery, object storage. Snowflake, object storage. Right, All of them were built on object storage. It's been primary in the cloud since day one. But what's interesting is that even though all three public clouds have adopted orange object storage uh, wholesale, they don't all support the S3 API, right? You still have major gaps when you're looking at Azure, major gaps when you're looking at GCP. And that provides both frustration from a customer perspective, but a significant opportunity for someone like MinIO. The other thing that's really of note that's driven this concept and driven this trend of object storage as primary storage is performance. Now, I think there's a myth out there that says that object storage is sort of slow and steep, cheap and deep. The truth of the matter is in the public cloud, that's never been the case. You won't get services like Snowflake. You won't get services like BigQuery if it were slow. It's always been fast in the public cloud. And for us to be the world's fast object, fastest object store, we had to go earn that against some very, very steep competition. Now, this concept and the myth of object storage being slow is something that was perpetrated by other sort of technology uh, vendors in that space. And they were picking on the HDD, archival kind of object storage workloads. And truth of the matter is those things are slow, but for modern object storage, it's never been slow. The thing that's changed as well is that you now have NVMe really in the sweet spot of that price performance ratio. That coupled with the rise of 100 giggy networks allows you to pair fast software with fast hardware. And now you can capture and take on any workload that you want. That includes databases, that includes AI and ML, that includes uh, advanced analytics, and it includes things like snapshots and artifactory workloads as well. But it's really about expanding the map in terms of what it is that you can cover and the more things that you can cover universally, the more places you're gonna be. And again, it pushes and accelerates this concept of the multi-cloud. I think the other thing that has pushed object storage into this primary role is that you have enterprise grade everything at scale. We'll start with performance. You can have performance and you can have scale, but it's really, really hard to have performance at scale. This is where object storage, modern object storage shines the ability to do hundreds of gigabits per second on throughput, on reads, uh, and hundreds on writes. And we're gonna show you that today, but these are very, very big changes in terms of the perspective that you take at this problem, because again, performance and scale. You also have the concepts around things like immutability and security, uh, encryption availability. Again, once performed at scale at multi-petabyte workloads, it becomes a much different problem set. And so in that sense, object storage isn't just competing with San Inez, it's way out ahead of it in terms of doing these things at scale.